Let's now attempt to apply what we know about connectives to compound sentences that use multiple connectives, since these can be used to approximate the complexities often found in the kinds of arguments we ordinarily make. A single sentence in sentential logic can use multiple connectives, which allows for complex constructions. However, the connectives can't be haphazardly tossed together. There are specific rules that govern their arrangement. When you use a connective to build a longer sentence from a shorter one, the shorter sentence is said to be in the scope of the connective. So in the sentence, if both A and B then C, the scope of the connective, in this case the horseshoe, includes the conjunction A and B as the antecedent and C as the consequent. In the sentence, it is not the case that both A and B the scope of the tilde is the conjunction of A and B. On the other hand, in the sentence not A and B, the scope of the tilde is just the atomic sentence A. Usually, the last connective that you add when you assemble a sentence is the main connective of that sentence. For example, the main logical operator of it is not the case that either E or if F then G is negation, the tilde. The main logical operator of either not E or if F then G is disjunction, the wedge or the V. The main connective of any sentence will have all the rest of the sentence included in its scope. This can get confusing. Happily, we can use parentheses, brackets, and braces to clarify the logical structure of the sentence and eliminate ambiguity. Every sentence in sentential logic should have an unambiguous main connective, and every connective in a sentence should have a clearly defined scope. To make the scope of a connective easier to determine, sentential logic uses certain widely accepted notational conventions. First, we can leave off parentheses that occur around the entire sentence, such as the parentheses that surround the conjunction of two atomic statements. Rather than place parentheses around a conjunction like this, we can simply write A and B. Second, we'll want to avoid using many nested pairs of parentheses and instead use brackets and braces to disambiguate longer sentential strings. So, instead of using something like this expression, which is swarming with parentheses, we'll use this, which is much simpler and uses brackets to clarify things. This expression allows us to more quickly determine that the ampersand is the main connective. Third, as a matter of convention, we can omit parentheses when we can join or disjoin three or more atomic sentences, provided they are not part of a larger compound sentence, as follows, A and B and C, A or B or C. Here, we don't need parentheses since the expressions simply aggregate identical connectives that are either conjunctive or disjunctive. Well, that's it for our introduction to sentential logic and its statement connectives. While our text discusses recursive syntax, it's not important for our purposes, although it's interesting as a reflection on metalanguages and metavariables. In our next unit, we'll see how truth tables can be used to determine tautologies, contingencies, and contradictions, as well as validity. Until then, best wishes.